Hey, how you doing? I hope you're doing well. The spectacular Spider-Man is for sure up there in being one of the greatest adaptations of any comic book character like ever, dude. Tight, fun, heartfelt, and sincere writing that is never afraid to tackle mature subject matter. Simple character designs that allow for very fluid, kinetic, and stylized animation. Perfectly faithful to the core values that make Peter Parker, Peter Benjamin Parker. The series is full of so much love for every rendition of the wall crawler, from Steve Ditko all the way to Sam Raimi. It's wonderful amazing, dare I say spectacular. And I could talk about it for days, but for now, I want to talk about the one episode, the one arc that has always stuck with me. The one that I think has the most to say about Spider-Man's character, and the one that takes a deep dive literally into Peter Parker's soul. But first, I'd like to thank the sponsor of today's video, NordVPN. For those of you who aren't in the know, a VPN is a virtual private network which allows your precious data to travel safely from one location to its destination. It does so by encrypting your data, making it more secure along its journey. NordVPN offers a thick web of different features, such as a kill switch, which acts like the last line of defense from accidental data exposure, a no logs policy so you can be confident they don't keep any record of your activity. But my favorite feature has got to be the ability to change your online location so you can watch basically whatever the hell you want. Say you want to watch Spectacular Spider-Man on Netflix, but it's not available in your country. With a few flips and a location change and a clack, you're swinging. NordVPN works on your computer or your mobile device and you can connect up to six devices. If you're looking to improve and protect your online experience, NordVPN is offering you guys a spectacular deal. Go to nordvpn.com slash hightopfilms or click on my link in the description and use code hightopfilms to get a two-year plan with a huge discount, plus one additional month free. Try it risk-free with Nord's 30-day money-back guarantee. Thanks, guys. The black suit, the symbiote, the venom has always worked best for me as a metaphor. An allegory of sorts about substance abuse. A story where our beloved hero falls into temptation, gives in to his most selfish of desires to avoid feeling powerless, helpless. An all-consuming, soul-sucking alien that our hero willingly puts on as a way to ease his pain. Pain. A physical representation of the darkness within Peter Parker, within all of us. And I think that Spectacular Spider-Man easily has the best take on this tale. A take that goes all the way with that metaphor, forcing Peter Parker to have an intervention with himself. You guys already know the modern telling. An unknown alien substance is brought back to Earth and finds its way onto our friendly neighborhood emotional wreck. And here, the suit, the goo, the ooze, first takes over during a typical Parker anxiety shame spiral. Okay, so there's no okay, so proof there's in no any of my pictures, but I know I didn't take it. And what's the doctor see? Spidey saved him from a permanent case of lizard breath. I mean, how could he betray the old webhead that way? And how am I ever gonna clear my friendly neighborhood name? It's perfectly fitting that in the symbiote's first appearance, Peter uses it to fend off an imposter Spider-Man. He's fighting a twisted, selfish mockery of himself. Everyone believes that Peter is capable of being a thief, a menace. All his worst thoughts about himself are now being voiced by those around him. The symbiote latches onto Peter's insecurity. It senses his fear, his doubt. It knows that he needs a way out, a way to fix it all. And the first time he uses its power, feels its effects, he's attempting to prevent a catastrophe, a trauma that once happened to him, that once took everything from him. No, Eddie and I lost our parents in a plane just like that. The substance that is now on him, becoming a part of him, seemingly helped prevent the pain prevents reliving the loss that is stuck with him. Why would he want to take it off? Why wouldn't he want to keep using it? If the symbiote, if the substance can prevent pain, prevent the anxiety and the fear, would you take it off? Actually, I sort of, what are you doing? You tell the truth and they'll take the suit away and you need its power to help people. He would keep using and using it. It makes his life easier. It makes him feel stronger, feel better, feel lighter. Peter has always been burdened with the crushing weight of the world, of the responsibility on his shoulders. He's always barely making enough to live, barely saving the day, barely maintaining a social life. The suit, the substance, takes the pressure off. 
How did I ever live without you? But there's always a cost. It can be, can start with a night out you don't remember, waking up exhausted, not remembering why or how you got to this point. It's it's like I slept through the, through the whole fight. This wasn't me wearing the suit. This was the suit wearing my body. It can be shirking the responsibility, carelessly being uninvolved in what's happening around you, not being there for the ones you love. Where have you been? Your aunt- uh, shh, 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 she's still asleep upstairs. No, Peter, she had a heart attack last night. She's in the hospital. All of it leading to self-isolation, locking yourself away, stuck in your mind, the spiral of negativity, hiding the warm parts of yourself, lashing out at those who care for you, those who wish to help you. Help? Help? <laughs> it's a good one. How exactly do you plan on helping? Do my homework, maybe lower my GPA? Or, or borrow my camera, take some spidey pics? Because I do need the money. I got some humongous hospital bills to pay. We're just trying to be your friends. Yeah, well, unless my friends are prepared to pony up some cash, they can keep their help and their sympathy. Visually, as the substance takes over, as Peter is losing more and more of his kindness, his empathy, the suit becomes less and less Spider-Man-like. The spider logo twisting, mutating, the webs, the lines, his morals becoming less and less clear. The symbiote eventually taking over his chest, consuming his heart with its darkness. The episodes no longer end with the warm, vibrant red webbing of love and of hope but instead slither to black. And sometimes when you reach that blackness, that bottom, it takes the most unlikely of allies to get you to realize how much you've given away, fallen into your selfishness, your self-harm, how much you've thrown away, lost, in order to escape that feeling of loss. It's the symbiote, it's changing me, it's taking over my life. I have to get it off. The only way out of the trauma, the darkness, is through it, facing it all head on. Uncle Ben, you don't know how much I've missed you. This time I'll stop it. This time I have to stop it. Then, then everything can go back to the way it's supposed to. And, and, and Uncle Ben will... Ah, not again. Not again. You can't change the past, can't change the trauma you have endured, the mistakes you've made. You can't bring those you've lost back. There is always the option of escape, of staying still, seeping in your loss, your anger, your pain. It's easy to inject, to eat, to fuck, to snort, to smoke, to drink your problems away. Money, guilt, lack of control, lack of self-worth, we all try to find a way to run, to hide, to escape from those emotions. Sometimes that thirst for escape becomes unquenchable, all-consuming thunderous storm reigns over, the deep dark venom consumes our reality, taking all of its color, its joy, its love, and we are left with ourselves, the brokenness, the trauma. We didn't hurt Uncle Ben. The world took him away from us. The world takes everything we love. The temptation creeps in, offering its devilish hand so easy to take. But within that, there is always the chance, the glimmer of hope, the light of love. Hold up there, kiddo. Uncle Ben. Peter Parker, like all of us, is always on the brink of giving in to his ego, his vanity, his selfish desires. It's the constant battle within himself. But no matter how close his worst fears are to becoming a reality, no matter how many times he pushes those he loves away, no matter how many times he faces death almost succumbs to his darkness. Why bother struggling? There's no place you can hide. No matter how many times he loses those he cares for, their love is still with him. Boy's got no need to hide. I'm stronger than you think. That love, the lessons they taught him, the life they gave him, will always be within him. Thanks, Uncle Ben. Anytime, kiddo. I'm always here. Giving him the strength to beat his demons, to get clean again and again. Still slow on the uptake, huh? You're a disease. They're the cure. And I find all of this very inspiring because of its realness. Spectacular Spider-Man was always truthful. Money problems, drug addictions, letting those you love down. The series never shied away from the harsh reality we all live in. Peter Parker is a character that is flawed, that is plagued with the same desires, the same fears we all have. 
and we can stumble with him, given to our demons and sink to the lowest of lows. But we can also swing with him, high above the streets, knowing we are filled with that darkness, that ability to do harm, but also brimming with light, endlessly capable of trying to be better.